Hello, and welcome to our podcast, Behind the Scenes of PR, a show on public relations and content marketing. Stick around for the tips and tricks that will help you become a PR pro. Good public relations is all about building relationships, communicating a clear message, and connecting with key stakeholders. It entails managing an organization's goodwill by engaging in activities that foster trust and positive public perceptions. A good public relations campaign aims to leave a lasting impression on the mind of the audience. Sometimes some PR campaigns are so powerful that we can never forget them. It happens because we can connect with them somehow, or it's related to our views or thoughts. In most cases, bad PR refers to activities that can harm an organization's reputation or brand image. Examples include providing misleading information to consumers, issuing statements without proper research or accuracy checks, taking on controversial initiatives without considering potential consequences, failing to respond in a timely manner during a crisis, or not taking responsibility for mistakes. Ultimately, good PR is about creating positive relationships and maintaining a brand's integrity, whereas bad PR can destroy credibility, impair the organization's image, and negatively affect public opinion. While it is important to be proactive and embrace strategies that enhance an organization's reputation, it is just as important to take a step back and consider any risks associated with potential PR activities. It is better to be cautious than sorry in the long run. No PR is bad PR. Bad PR is illogical since there is no plan, strategy, or even purpose behind it. It doesn't provide anyone with a coherent image of a company as well as its products and services. However, we come across a point about what constitutes bad PR that is rarely discussed nowadays. It's usually popular among startups or low-budget companies, which suppose that bad public relations are better than nothing. Unfortunately, it's not true. A badly written press release can hurt a company's reputation. Some people can consider the company incompetent or even a loser after a failed press release. It would be less dreadful to not have any image than to have a negative one. Meanwhile, good PR can be priceless. It provides your company with a positive image, which is capable of attracting new clients. And everybody knows your company's values as well as what to expect from your product. A positive image also carries weight in the business industry. It proves that your company is reliable, and investors don't waste their time and money on it. Bad PR examples. One PR mistake can seriously damage a company's reputation. Even the most successful world brands can screw up so badly that their PR case will leave them with millions of dollars in damage. It goes without saying that bad PR is essentially doing the exact opposite of what PR is meant to be. It indicates that the company's marketing strategy lacks a plan, procedure, strategy, or goal. The last couple of years were packed with numerous ad and PR disasters. Let's look at the worst PR examples that took place in recent years and what exactly we should learn from them. Pepsi and Kendall Jenner ad. Pepsi has lived through plenty of bad PR examples. Remember the big failure of 1989 commercial that featured Madonna and her controversial Like a Prayer song? A couple of years ago, the scapegoat of the Pepsi ad was the supermodel Kendall Kenner. Before the release of this commercial, she had no idea that it would turn out to be a disaster. In the video, young people are protesting peacefully on the street while Jenner is having a photo shoot. She joins the protesters and the whole crowd started walking directly to the police. The last scene is when she shares a can of Pepsi with one of the police officers followed by the happy cheers of the crowd. Americans responded overly negatively to the video. They claimed Pepsi used protests, earlier considered as a very important part of the US history, as a background for marketing their product. At this time, the country has already lived through a few protests against racial inequality and police cruelty. People were indignant at the unrealistic image of a peaceful protest with friendly police officers. The campaign was pulled shortly after being released after a huge outcry followed its widespread release. Why was this campaign bad? It showed a serious divide between the brand and the world around them and attempted to simplify major, serious issues that we all have to face together. This campaign was so out of touch with society and blatantly disrespected so many serious social issues that it shined such a negative spotlight on the brand, as well as the people that were featured in the ads. Both Pepsi and Kendall Jenner had to apologize officially for the commercial. This example shows how risky it may be to mix product promo with big social issues. 
there is no place for profiting when it comes to big social issues. H&M and the Monkey Sweatshirt In January 2018, H&M posted a photo of a black child wearing a sweatshirt with the finny title, Coolest Monkey in the Jungle. The image caused a negative reaction on social media, many users were calling for the company's boycott. The company was accused of using the monkey reference towards black people. Even the world-known popular Canadian Ethiopian singer, The Weeknd who earlier starred in an H&M commercial, tweeted about the termination of his collaboration with the brand. H&M had to apologize and promised to remove the photo from all websites and stop selling the sweatshirt in US stores. Nonetheless, those items that were in stock before the actual removal got sold out instantly. Soon, the controversial sweatshirt appeared on eBay and other online marketplaces at a much higher price. The lesson we may learn from this brand is to always watch out for possible signs of racial and ethnic slurs. In a world where racial inequality is highly unaccepted, just one innocuous image from the product catalog may cause you years of positive reputation. Dolce & Gabbana Chinese Ad Dolce & Gabbana is another brand associated deeply with bad PR examples. The loudest scandal of recent years started after the release of the brand's commercial in Shanghai. The video featured a Chinese model struggling to eat Italian pizza, spaghetti, and cannoli with chopsticks under the guidance of an off-screen male voice. Many people stated the video plays on double meanings with obvious racist and sexist context. The Chinese fashion show advertised in this commercial had to be cancelled. In response, Stefano called China the ignorant dirty-smelling mafia, although as stated later by him, Gabbana's Instagram account got hacked. One way or another, the largest Chinese online retailers withdrew the brand's items from the sale, and the video got removed from all channels. So only after, Dolce and Gabbana posted an apology stating they have always loved China dearly, and their numerous trips made them love Chinese culture even more. China was a huge market for Dolce and Gabbana, so losing it became a financial disaster. One lesson we may learn from this unsuccessful campaign is to understand and respect the culture of the country you promote. Make sure none of your actions and company's views somehow offend any culture, nationality, or race. Tesla Cybertruck Demo Fail In 2019, Tesla company introduced us to the new bulletproof Cybertruck. The bulletproof feature was highly advertised and peached by the company's founder Elon Musk. However, during its live presentation, the vehicle failed the crash test two times in a row. Musk wanted to prove the strength and resistance of the armor glass but end up smashing it with two metal balls. Lately, the company's founder has explained the situation on Twitter. Before the actual crash test, Franz von Holthausen, Tesla's main designer and a live stream partner of Elon Musk, smacked the door with a sledgehammer to prove its durability. This may have cracked the glass base and led to a big smash by the metal balls. According to many PR specialists, Tesla's Cybertrack demo could be a PR stunt to raise media attention to the new product. One way or another, Tesla's stock did drop by more than 6% after the event. The lesson behind the Tesla Cybertrack case is a good example of how important it is to test your product multiple times before praising its functionality. EasyJet and Broken Seats From previous bad PR examples, we may highlight the power of Twitter and how devastating it may be for the reputation of big brands. EasyJet was not the exception. In 2019, an airline passenger a photo of an older woman sitting on the backless seat of an EasyJet plane. By tagging the company, Matthew Harris, the passenger's name, wanted to raise attention to the issue. The tweet gained the attention from journalists asking for details and then followed by an ambiguous response from the official EasyJet account. The company asked to take down the tweet and discuss the issue on a private basis, which caused even more online backlash. Later, the company's representative stated that none of the passengers was allowed to sit on backless seats. Safety is our top priority, EasyJet operates its aircraft in accordance with all safety rules. Obviously, the big resonance behind the EasyJet case was not the backseat itself. Some of the airline competitors have been accused of the same issue, yet none of them came out of the situation with a huge scandal like this. Asking to remove the image gives customers the impression as if they have something to hide from the public eye. So here is a final lesson we may take from this case. Being transparent with your customers is one of the most significant parts of your brand identity. 
Instead of proving your point, learn to accept mistakes and apologize for failures. Bad PR can have a huge negative impact on a company's reputation. Poorly handled crises or missteps can lead to criticism from stakeholders, customers, and even employees. If not addressed quickly and professionally, bad PR can have a long-term impact on the company's reputation, which could have serious financial repercussions. One of the most notable bad PR examples in 2022 was when a large streaming service deleted thousands of user reviews from its site without explanation or notification to its customers. Customers felt betrayed and outraged, leading to a huge backlash against the company that quickly spread across social media. As consumers voiced their displeasure and threatened to leave the service, the company eventually released an apology and promised to take steps to address customer concerns. However, the incident had already done significant damage to their reputation and forced them to make serious changes in order to restore trust with customers. Good PR versus bad PR. Good PR is public relations done right. It means telling your story in a clear, compelling way that builds trust and interest. It also means choosing the right medium for each stage of your campaign, from writing press releases to creating videos and landing pages. It's not just about throwing out a bunch of information on social media and hoping people will notice. Instead, it's about crafting messages that are relevant and authentic and tailoring those messages to the type of audience you want to attract. And it's about listening closely to what your audience says back to you so you can adjust your strategy accordingly. Bad PR is anything else, false or misleading information spread via social media, email campaigns, or other channels. Or it could be actions taken without permission, like posting your own content without permission. Or it could be things like deleting posts after they've been published, or using social media bots to amplify the reach of a post without the author actually sharing it themselves. PR is an interesting industry. It can help define your brand's image in either a negative or positive light. Of course, having good PR is always beneficial. But, in the instance that you discover bad PR that misrepresents your image, it's best to have a way to respond to said bad PR. Take a look at how Elon Musk is handling the wide variety of PR being put out. Regardless of what you think of him, he does his best to address negative PR in a humorous and fun manner. While, of course, appreciating and taking good PR for its value. By responding to public relations, you can influence how it affects your brand. PR crisis is not a verdict. But even if a PR crisis happens, you can avoid a business disaster. At first, you have to understand the nature of this challenge and limit the damage to your business. A detailed analysis of your business will strengthen it. Every small business should remember the importance of public relations. Its concept is extremely vital when it comes to your business success because you have to deal with different people who can recommend your company to their friends and neighbors or, vice versa, spread dreadful rumors about your business. The majority of businesses will face a public relations crisis one day. It can be in the form of negative reviews or even huge scandals. A negative event can seriously damage a company's reputation. It's just impossible to have a perfect business because we are all humans, not robots. When it comes to a public relations crisis, you should realize that you can't somehow control its outcome. But you can also try to use it as an advantage because, due to this crisis, your business's image is likely to be in the minds of your customers. We observe bad PR examples even among huge American companies like Facebook or Uber face this form of crisis now and then. For example, Facebook was accused of neglecting data privacy, but later the company managed to prove that the accusations were false. Anyway, this incident can be a good lesson for small businesses. Learning from others' mistakes will help you lower the chances for a PR disaster. But even if it happens, there is always a way out. As you identify the nature of the conflict, it will help you develop possible solutions with the least damage to your business. Although the PR crisis might seem intangible, it can affect your business in the long run because everyone wants to work with trustworthy companies. Any mild accident can jeopardize your company's trust. And therefore, the PR crisis can become a major issue. Every business should have the plan to handle the PR crisis. So, you should prepare a response team long before the crisis starts. You should react fast when an emergency happens. And it will be the key to success. Most businesses understand the importance of good PR and invest heavily in making sure their public image is positive. However, not all businesses are aware of the potential pitfalls of bad PR.
Bad PR can come in many forms, from an unhappy customer or employee going public with their grievances, to a negative review or article appearing in the press. In some cases, bad PR can even be the result of something as innocuous as a poorly worded press release. Whatever the cause, bad PR can have a serious impact on a business. It can damage a company's reputation, alienate customers and prospects, and even lead to financial losses. That's why it's so important for businesses to be aware of the potential risks of bad PR and take steps to mitigate them. Here are a few tips. Monitor your online reputation. In today's connected world, it's important to keep an eye on what's being said about your business online. Set up Google alerts for your company name and the names of key executives, and regularly check online review sites and social media to see what people are saying. Respond quickly to negative publicity. If you do find yourself the subject of negative publicity, it's important to respond quickly and effectively. Address the issue head-on, and take steps to make things right. Be proactive about your PR, don't wait for something bad to happen before you start thinking about your PR strategy. Be proactive and invest in a good PR firm or consultant who can help you avoid potential problems and build a positive reputation for your business. Good PR can help a business thrive while bad PR can be devastating. By being aware of the risks and taking steps to mitigate them, you can protect your business from the negative consequences of bad publicity. That's it for this week's episode of Behind the Scenes of PR. Be sure to sign up to our email list at pernas.io and follow us in your favorite podcast app so that you don't miss our next episode. Thanks for listening. Thank you.